Buddy, you're a boy, make a big noise. 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 Boy, make a big noise. Big noise. Big noise. Hi everybody, due to my recent decision to stop playing World of Warcraft, the Pugwatch videos, as you probably noticed, have stopped already. Um, mainly because I just cannot get the time to do them, and when I do get the time to do them, I spend forever wiping in heroics with groups that refuse to communicate, so they're on hiatus for now. In place of those videos, I'm now going, well, in fact, I wouldn't even say in place, it's a one-off. Um, I've been playing Fallen Earth recently, I got, uh, I was originally subscribed when it first came out, was fairly impressed with it but felt it needed a lot more polish um, I never continued my subscription after the first month a few months down the line I think in fact we could even be near to a year down the line from when I first played it I got an invite to come back and try the game again 4 99 for one month subscription so I thought hey why the hell not let's see what it's like now the first things you should know about this game is it is an action MMO as you can see from the videos playing in the background at the moment um, you can you attack in real time. Um, you can aim. You can shoot people in the face. You get extra points for headshots, etc. And you kind of run around, gather in real time. Everything is done in real time. There's no press button, receive bacon mechanic like there is in Warcraft. Which, as, as complex as Warcraft makes it with all the boss fights and that, at the end of the day, press button, receive bacon is the key key mechanic. So there's a, quite a lot here in um, Fallen Earth that I like. The crafting system is extremely in-depth. Uh, anyone who's played Star Wars Galaxies and enjoyed crafting, this game is very close to it. I mean, I've only just started, so hopefully it'll only get more in-depth as we go along. Um, but I'll cover that a bit more as we go through. Now, the idea of this video is just to run you through the first 20 minutes or so of the game, the tutorial mission. Um, if I get requests to put up a few more of these, then I will. But... Uh, I'll fade out here and let the tutorial run through. Now there is voice acting in uh, Fallen Earth for the tutorial session so I will stop talking once we hit that part. Um, here as you see I've got two characters already, one level 2, one level 3 and I'm just going to make a new character, completely randomise them and just to take you through the tutorial. Uh, I will refrain from speaking when the narrator is talking and when the uh, Elena who I'll introduce in a second is, uh, is currently going through the parts of the mission you need to do. Um, but yeah, Fallen Earth's got quite an in-depth character creation system. As you can see here, I've randomised my name and my appearance quite easily. Um, but you can, there's loads of tattoos you can choose from. There's different styles of makeup, you name it, it's all in there. I've gone for a female character for two reasons. Is One, anyone who's played Fallen Earth when I did originally, females looked absolutely horrific. Um, they kind of looked a little bit like the undead zombies from, Fall from the Fallout series of games. So uh, I thought I'd, I'd pick a female character so people can see the changes here as well. Now, once you've made your character and picked all your, your items and that there, you can uh, confirm it. It'll load in the background. It takes, I must admit, for a game that is as big as this is, I'm again surprised at the, I suppose I could say, lack of um, loading screens. If anyone's played Warcraft, which most people have by this point, it loads like that. You load once to into an area, then that's it. It doesn't seem to load again. I've not encountered other loading screens once I'm in. Anyway, without further ado, let's get this show on the road. control terminal. Activate it. so I'm just going to lay it out. You are a clone. Alec Master Scientists had you and other replicated humans created for experimentation and organ harvesting. I'm trying to help you escape. My name is Elena Winters. I'm the head LifeNet pod technician. 
I maintain and operate the cloning chamber that produced you. If you want to survive, you need to trust me. I hacked my workstation to get access to the dam's security cameras and door controls. I'll guide you from the cloning chamber to where I am using the radio in your clone collar. Now, head down the steps and through the hall. Don't worry, I'll put you on a safe path. Well, the safest, anyway. Citizens, we are on lockdown. Any unauthorized personnel outside of the living quarters will be shot on sight. Thank you. That's Aero Sai, Master's second in command. Believe me, she means what she says about killing you. You need to find a weapon. Ugh. Well, that axe might work. Those White Crow are pinned down right where you need to go. You have to take them out. Hey, over here, before the guards spot you. They're still making clones, huh? I hope you're not itchy. I'm out of ammo, but those mercenaries up there don't know that. Sometimes clones come back wrong. If you're not itchy, don't worry about it. You look fine to me. You're a clone. If you die, you regenerate in the nearest life net pod. You're practically immortal. They look like fresh recruits. You should be able to handle them. And if not, you can always come back and try again. Now I'd like to add a note here regarding the combat. There is a brief description of how to perform in combat at the start, but you might not be able to read it. It appears under my quests list, which is just under the radar. You switch to active combat mode either by clicking the middle mouse button or by pressing the tab. And the idea is that while you're like that, the camera pretty much moves with the mouse like you were a first person shooter. Pressing tab again goes back to your standard click to move interface. Go through the door and down the hall. Click to use interface, There's one of Master's men standing guard like in the next room. Deserved. Now, before you leave, try to find a rifle on one of the corpses in here. I wouldn't want you to bring an axe to a gunfight. Looting is very much standard fare, like with any other MMO. You uh, target the corpse, press Y to loot it. You can also click on it if you're in the uh, click to, to uh, use it interface. Once you've got it, you can open up your inventory, double click to equip it. Um, you can bring up your inventory and see both your what you call your um, character items, so all your weapons that you're carrying as well as all your armor and gear that you're wearing. As you can see here I'm demonstrating in the video at the moment the combat is real time, I'm zooming in, I'm firing those shots, literally one click fires a shot. I can't go absolutely nuts but hey it's a, it's a beginner weapon. Now you're headed for the medical bay. It's where they operate on clones. Be careful. All units report to the command center now! This is where the tutorial really puts it to you and gets you into a combat situation. These uh, corpse dissectors, or clone dissectors, are down in the valley and you've come in up above, you can just shoot them and take them out. Saves, it saves you getting beaten up too badly while seeing how combat works. It's a pretty good idea and it does mean that you get to learn that like making headshots equals more damage. Anyone who's familiar with playing a shoot em up game will automatically aim for the head like I've noticed myself doing. Um, so just aim for the head, do extra damage. The, there is that the, the are melee weapons, I should say. Um, I'm not a big fan Sniper! of them. Maybe it's different yeah, different melee cover! weapons affect different people, or you have your own personal preference. I've always been a ranged person, normally a spellcaster in most games, um, so I, I tend to go for guns and that. Now, as you can see there, my rangefinder is showing 34 meters in red. That means my shots are not going to hit. So I get a little bit closer, make the shots again. Not a problem. Also, the number underneath the rangefinder, the little four which keeps decreasing, you probably realised by now it's an ammo count. 
once we run out of ammo, I've got to wait a couple seconds while I read the gun. Work. But with all the fighting going on, you're going to need some med kits. The light bearers are experts in healing, so I bet they can help you. Many thanks for helping us. We came to save these mutants from being slaughtered by Alec Master's scientists, but I didn't think they'd be armed. If you hadn't come, we might not have survived. I am Jonas, one of the light bearers. We are many things, warriors, teachers, and healers like myself. We strive to harness the powers of Shiva's touch, what most people call mutations, and use them for good. I would speak further, but I must see to the wounded. Is there anything you need? Masters will be avenged! The Shota and their allies will pay! Kill them! Kill them! Don't shoot! I need your help. Do you These have guys any look like enforcers. The could be I back think you can second. trust them. Shit. We've got hostiles incoming. I need your help to fight them off. I'm not touching it. You touch it. That was me attempting to loot a corpse that had been killed by someone else. They have a, quite a few funny responses for things like that. Citizens, the dam will not fall. Prepare to die with honor. <laughs> Arrow Sai's got a bomb in the motor pool. I'll run things from here, but you have to disarm that bomb. Otherwise, everyone in the dam is dead. As you can see here, I've engaged at range, but I can choose to close in by switching to my axe and closing to melee distance. However, from what I understand of the combat system, you're penalised for the more you move around while trying to make attacks. So, instead of being able to just run around people and hit them with weapons, a la World of Warcraft, you have to kind of stand still and beat them in the face. The more you run around, the less likely you are to hit, and the more likely they are to hit you from what I... Again, this is from what I understand. I could be wrong. I'm very new to this game since they've made all the combat changes. Now another cool thing I like is I've just picked up two pistols and without needing any special training or anything like that hey look, dual wield. Now the pistols do fire BB so they're not exactly amazing but again they're starter level weapons so they look pretty cool and they make a funny sound when you fire them and they run off the same ammo as the uh, larger rifle I was carrying so pretty much no need to farm ammo. I've now got two guns I can do double damage then they are attached to left and right, left and right mouse button respectively, so I can either fire all of one or all of the other. Although one thing is, when you run out of ammo in one, you tend to reload them both. I must admit, I do find that quite easy, so I tend to go one, two, one, two, one, two, rather than fire all of one and all of the other. Now this is the scavenging training. Um, scavenging is pretty much a way of getting items out of the ground. Uh, you need certain toolkits to be able to scavenge, which I've now just picked up and now I'm just scavenging a load of junk on the floor so I've got some copper Why now if you've not got the toolkit active you works. can't actually scavenge I try and scavenge the uh, rock and the plant here and I'm not activating my toolkits so I'll go into the box I picked up as you can see it there in my inventory open it up ta-da there's all my toolkits so those are now available so I can literally walk up to those mineral nodes and mine them all again 
The game does cover in quite a bit of detail what you need to do here, but it's all in text and pop-ups for, for help and tooltips and that. They're pretty in-depth, but uh, again, I've done it all already, so I know what they are. And rather than forcing everybody to pause the video, it makes more sense while it's quiet for me to explain it. Okay, now we have to get to the reader. Ah, damn it! Oh, hell, they're coming in! Clone, I got those two, but there's more coming. You got bomb out of the dam before. Hey, over here. Never thought I'd be happy to see a clone. The bomb's right below us. I'll lead you to it. The bomb's right there in the ATV. See those barrels? They're full of toxic waste. Now take a look at the ceiling. See that? This room pumps air to most of the dam. If those barrels break open, everyone in the dam is dead. You've got to get the bomb away from the barrels. I'm not a clone. If I jumped down there, I'd break my legs. If I somehow crawled to the ATV and drove into the vault, I'd still be a dead man. But you're different. You'll be regenerated, and we can have a few drinks and laugh about it tonight. I'll even buy the drinks. Ah, oh, shit! Underdwellers! Good job. Now get on that ATV and drive it into the vault. Have fun. That window you just saw pop up there was a guild invite. Um, the good thing about any guild invites you receive is that you do get a mass of information regarding the guild, so you can have a read over and choose to join it if you do, if you wish. Um, the reason I was invited is because I was a member of that same guild on another character, and I, before this video started, I did wish for them and then changed my mind. Welcome to LifeNet, a product of Global Tech. If you're seeing this, you are dead. But don't worry, with LifeNet, death is just a minor setback. You may be feeling confused, disoriented, or even a little scared. It's understandable. You just had your vigorous, happy life interrupted by... Explosion. Please, accept our condolences. But no more dwelling on the past. Right now, LifeNet is reconstructing your body. Thanks to our patented fit fitness will... The magic of rebirth happens inside LifeNet's patented regeneration pod. It's a simple orbit, finest, refined, and your perfectly cloned body comes out. You've also been fitted with a wireless neural scanner, providing dynamic syncing between your brain and the LifeNet database. Your memories will be... But wait, there's more. Clone, can you hear me? It's Elena Winters. Your stunt with the ATV saved the dam. It's thanks to you I'm alive to have this conversation. Even so, the battle took its toll. The dam fell to the Choda. The Choda got revenge on Alec Masters, but not before he added one last entry to his list of sins. Masters destroyed the LifeNet core, the mainframe for all the cloning chambers in the province. This has changed everything. 
LifeNet's creators never planned for this. They dreamed LifeNet would end the limits of a single lifetime and save humanity from its fear of death. Masters showed us the truth. People are afraid of death, but even more afraid of losing control. He sacrificed you and every other clone to keep anyone else from having access to immortality. So I did what I could. I rerouted your DNA through the auxiliary computers in the province, but it wasn't easy or quick. It's been four years since you died saving the dam. The destruction of the core damaged the backup storing your DNA. Worse yet, your future cloning potential has been compromised. You're dying, and I don't know how much time you have. Once you die, you stay dead, just like the rest of us. There's one way to fix this. You have to find the alpha clones whose DNA makes up the LifeNet database. If you can integrate their undamaged DNA with your own, you can undo what Masters did and restore your immortality. The only clue I've found points to the LifeNet facility near Embry Crossroads. There's a LifeNet technician there who can explain the Alpha Clone's location. You're about to wake up in a LifeNet station. The computer there will let you choose where to begin your new life. Remember what I told you. You're special. You were created to be immortal. LifeNet can give you back what Master stole from you. Don't forget that. And don't forget me. So, there you have it. You die saving the dam. Four years later, you're resurrected. You can't no sleep for the wicked, eh? Still, once you've resurrected, you can now choose which starting area you'd like to go to. There are three, and all three can be accessed from this location. Simply speaking to the computer here will show you what options you've got. Um, the first one is with the Chota, the Sons of the Apocalypse, I think it stands for. Children of the Apocalypse, sorry. Um, they are a combat specialist camp, so you can go there. You can go to um, the middle one, which is a crafting area, but I can't remember the name of it. And then the final one is for support style players. Each one gives you quests that will help you improve and learn the skills that you want to. As you can see here, I discovered there was a first person mode as well. I didn't realise this was in here until I scrolled in coming out of the uh, life pod. And I'm quite impressed actually with the fact that you've kind of got a, a whole set of animations on that for the weapons, even while in first person. Some of them aren't so good, like these little... Uh, pea shooters. When you reload them she sort of rubs them against each other. But I do quite like the firing animation so I can't argue. Anyway, talk to the computer. As you can see here there are three. They explain in great detail what goes on and once you've gone to the one that you've chosen there are quite a few quest givers and that nearby who will cover the basics of, of your sort of chosen area. From what I understand support is healing and buffing the group. Um, crafting pretty much speaks for itself. It's uh, the one that I've gone for on most characters actually is it's where you learn to craft, learn how to make things, build things etc etc um, I'm slowly working my way through there at the moment a uh, lot of scavenging for, for crafting and that, I don't know whether that's just because I have no idea where I'm going and I'm just scavenging everything in a five mile radius or maybe I just don't know what's going on t at all anyway once you've picked where you want to go the game will load again, you'll be placed in your starting area and you're free to explore um, if I do get enough interest in these then I may well record some of the starting areas and let people see exactly what goes on the first few quests and maybe even show some footage from some of my gameplay areas as I'm progressing on higher level characters. Um, but yeah, there's a many just to, to get the game out there to more people to, to see if it interests you.